Hi, welcome to Tessera's Nerf Room. You've been watching my channel for a while, you'll probably know that I kind of like Nerf Blasters a little bit. It's sort of the theme here. But what you guys might not know is the fact that I am a curator of bad games. I love bad games. If a game is really bad, I like to play through it and see how they could have improved or how bad it actually is. And when I heard talk of a game called Nerf Legends, a game that openly has the Nerf logo on it and it was available for Xbox, I was pretty happy. I was pretty excited. I go to GameStop. They happen to have a copy there for the Xbox. I picked it up. They only wanted $10 for it. And on the way home, I decided to look this game up because I want to read reviews, right? Only to learn that it's one of the worst rated games of all time. I was ecstatic. I think my heart skipped a beat. I was so excited to get a load of this. And when I finally got it home and decided to play it, did it disappoint? Oh my gosh, it did not disappoint at all. This game was just as bad as I was hoping it would be, and it was actually worse. It offered more than I bargained for, and I had a blast recording the gameplay footage for this video. What you are about to see is a random selection of clips that were recorded from my Xbox and then uploaded to OneDrive and downloaded onto my phone. OneDrive is terrible, so some of the clips I couldn't physically even download, so instead I had to manually screen record my phone and watch the video on the screen screen recording and then cut it up and edit it later. So some of the footage looks way worse than other parts of the footage. That's why, in case you're wondering. I wish there was a better option, but proprietary software. Big companies make the worst crap. And uh, Nerf is a pretty big company, so let's get started. First, I want to talk about the story, or moreover, the lack thereof. There is no story in this game. The story is literally that you are like training for something. I don't even think they make it clear what you're training for, like ch to defend Nerf City or something like that. It's the most generic, basic, boring story you could possibly squeeze into a Nerf game. I don't even know how you make a Nerf game. I'll tell you how you make a Nerf game. You just make a copy of Call of Duty and have use Nerf blasters instead of real blasters. That's not what this game is. The gameplay loop is like you're, you're hitting buttons and solving puzzles and stuff like that, and it just so happens to involve Nerf blasters. This game takes all of the boxes for what a bad game has. It's got some of the worst writing I've ever seen in any video game out there. The gunplay and physics are just all over the place. The actual gameplay loop is super boring and tedious. The story is non-existent and I could just go on and on. One thing that I do want to talk about is the arsenal that they provide you with, because being a nerf game, you obviously have a lot of nerf blasters that you can choose from. Well, I say a lot, but your arsenal is actually pretty limited on the game menu. For some reason, I didn't think to actually show a picture of the game menu, but you don't have very many blasters to choose from. A lot of the ones that you do have to choose from aren't very good blasters, and it really makes me think that they made this game just to try and prove that their blasters are better than they actually are, which is the greatest marketing tactic I've ever heard of. It's the, it's the Nerf Ultra design, where they just like, just, it's good, just take our word for it. Uh, it's good, it's in the game. It's If it's in the game, it must be good, right? Because we only put our good blasters in the game. Look at the blaster that I'm using as my primary right now. This is the blaster that you end up using for the majority of the game because it's like literally the best blaster in the entire game. I'm not even joking. They overpowered the Ultra One to make it look so much better than it actually is. Oh my goodness, I just realized I forgot to tell you guys about the cutscenes. The cutscenes in this game are absolutely magnificent. They make me belly laugh every single time one of them turns on. Because not only do you have the ridiculously cheesy writing that I mentioned earlier, but they are completely out of sync to the point where it's like you will see a character jump on the ground and the thud sound effect will happen two full seconds later. Two full seconds. That is how bad the syncing is on these animations and it just makes them Perfect, they match the entire game. It is absolutely hilarious how broken these animations and cutscenes all are, and the fact that they're there in the first place. Because as, as I said earlier, the game doesn't have a story. Why are there cutscenes introducing story characters who you only see once and then never see again? This character that I'm fighting right here is supposed to be like the final boss of one of these areas that you explore. There's like five different areas, but I'll go over that later. But you only see him this one time and then he just screws off for the rest of the game. It's just hilarious. 
I'm even stupider than I thought, because here's some of the arsenal, but I didn't show all of it for some bizarre reason. I really should have, at least for this video, but you can see here that they have some of the blasters on display, including the Raptor Strike, which has a scope on it! This begs another question. What is the gameplay like? Well, think Portal 2, but with all of the personality and charm taken out of it in replacement for monotonous button puzzles. It's all button puzzles. Every room that you go into is like two, three, four, five, six buttons that you have to run around and find and turn on in order to progress. And to make it more challenging, they have enemies all over the place which are firing at you, so you have to be strategic with how you find the buttons. This game is a find the button map. I'm, I'm not even making that up. Like, you spend 80% of your playtime trying to look for buttons, and you are genuinely seeing me struggle to get on top of this bridge, which is supposed to be, you just get on a box and then double jump onto the bridge. But I, I cannot get onto this bridge to save my life. I don't know why, but it took me forever to figure out how to get up there. It turns out you have to double jump onto one of those, like, support pillars I, I think I just activated the cutscene by accident. Yeah, I'm supposed to be on the bridge right now with that talking head thing talking to me, but like, yeah, the controls of this game are just as bad as the writing and the story and everything else. You obviously use the left stick to run and the right stick to look around and you use the right trigger to fire and the left trigger to aim. That makes sense. What doesn't make sense is how you run and how you crouch. To run, you have to press in on the left joystick while you're running, and to crouch, you have to be running and press the B button. What kind of Looney Tune control system is that? I've never seen anything like that before in my whole life. Why couldn't they have just emulated the way that Destiny 2 plays or something like that? That would have made way more sense. Instead, they decided to go with this strategy, which just doesn't make any sense. The thing that irks me is the fact that it's not the button puzzles themselves, it's how the button puzzles were pulled off. Because you can make button puzzles interesting. Here's how you do it. You have a central hub area that you start the level in, and there's several different ways that you can go. At the end of each corridor of events, there is a button. You have to press all five or six of them in order to open the main door to continue. Throughout each corridor, there is an interesting, complicated gauntlet that you have to go through in order to reach the button, and then when you press the button, on the way back, the gauntlet changes. That is how you do a button puzzle in a game like this. You don't just have random buttons hidden in obvious spots throughout one large room with- and re Look, I just accidentally found a button. With ridiculous amounts of enemies chasing you for, for no reason, and they just keep spawning. This thing right here is like one of the most annoying enemies in video game history. He takes a million hits and he will one-shot you if he touches you at least once. I, I don't know why, and you have to fight him like 30 times throughout the game. He's harder than the actual boss fights themselves, and speaking of which, let's talk about the boss fights. I'm gonna be referring back to this guy when I talk about boss fights. Every single boss fight in this game is exactly the same with no changes at all, except for the final boss fight, which I wasn't able to complete for a reason I will talk about later. So I actually have not finished this game even once for the making of this video, because I physically could not. But all of these boss fights involve you being in a large arena with the one guy that you're fighting. You basically just keep shooting him until he dies. His AI is about as smart as the actual in-game enemies, so it's not very hard to go through the whole fight without taking any damage, except for when he does that. I don't even know what that was, but it just deals damage all around where he is, and I'm not sure how to avoid it. But you can see how easily I just defeated the first round. These bosses are not hard. Even way later into the game when they introduce more gimmicks, the bosses don't get any harder. So how did they introduce it? They, they just give you more enemies throughout the rounds and they give you a first to three round system. So you have to, you have to defeat him three times in order to actually defeat the boss. It's literally just their excuse for the bosses being so easy. It's just, it's, it's atrocious. The boss fights in this game are not fun. They are monotonous and it's just, they are as bad as the rest of the game. Now you're not gonna believe this, but this game has DLCs. 
It has DLCs, and I bought all of the DLCs for the game because I needed the full Nerf Legends experience in order to properly justify this video. Well, I couldn't get all of them. There's one that isn't even available on Xbox for some reason, and I wasn't able to get that one, but I know exactly what it is. It's two extra blasters. They introduced the Elite 2.0 Echo and the Elite 2.0 Phoenix. I'm sure they were heavily beefed up from how they are in real life, because we all know how bad those blasters actually are but it doesn't really matter. I was able to get the other DLCs, which included the first three Dino Squad blasters, I'm, I'm not even joking, and the Mega Thunderhawk, because everybody knows the Thunderhawk is the best Mega Blaster out there. And actually, it is one of the best blasters you can use in the entire game. That blaster is really good in the game, and I ended up going through most of my second playthrough just using it because of how overpowered it is. One extra thing that I for some reason forgot to bring up is the excessive marketing. And obviously, I mean, it's a Nerf game. They're going to put their logo on it. But I mean, like, they have Nerf Ultra box art as decorations, like on banners and stuff throughout this castle that I'm going through right now. And I'm not sure if I have the clip that I recorded of that. If I don't have it now, I will put it in later. But they genuinely have like the side of the Nerf Ultra 1 box as a banner in the castle promoting their blaster. It's just hilarious how over the top their marketing is. They also have things like blimps around in the sky that are showcasing various blasters that are in the game as well as like your character and like a leaderboard system. Oh yeah, there's leaderboards, which do not matter because there is no multiplayer in this game. Oh, there is a multiplayer. That doesn't mean you'll actually be able to play it. Even at launch, multiplayer servers have been inaccessible and offline, which doesn't make any sense because this game was released on a current generation system in 2021. It's not rocket science to get multiplayer servers online, and especially you would think that they'd want to do that when they advertise multiplayer on the box, and it is a first-person shooter bespoke nerf game. Like, the, the Roblox game is unironically better at being a multiplayer game than the bespoke one that you can get on a disc on the, on the actual consoles themselves, not even using Roblox as a platform. This game was made using Unreal Engine. It is a game designed only to be a nerf game, only to be a multiplayer game that just happens to have a single player campaign built in for when you happen to be offline, and there's no multiplayer! Also, in case you guys are wondering, yes, this is me struggling tremendously with a five button puzzle and it took me over 20 full minutes to figure out how to complete it, which is hilarious. I actually started filming this like several minutes after I had already been in this room trying to figure out how to complete the puzzle, but it doesn't really matter. There is one more thing that I want to talk about when it comes to Nerf Legends, and that is the random frame drops when too many things are on screen. I understand because I'm not using the current generation hardware that this game is optimized for. I'm using it on an Xbox One S. This game was designed to be played on an Xbox Series X or an Xbox Series S or just a brand new PC. But I physically could not complete the game because as soon as the final boss would start, it generates like 30 enemies throughout the arena and they all start shooting at you and the game would drop to two frames per second leaving me to not even be able to get a single move of the joystick in before I was overridden with darts and just ex immediately cut out from the game. I could not complete the final boss and I sat there trying for a very long time to do it. And I was able to complete the rest of the game without taking too much damage. I mean, I died a couple times, but for the most part, the game is not hard. The difficulty comes from the cruddy controls and the random frame drops and excessive lag that it faces whenever there is a semi-cromulent amount of enemies on the screen at one time. Although, I also really want to quickly go over the music, because the music just deserves its own segment of this video. All of the music seems like it was made from one leitmotif that was tried to turn into a song, and there's only one guy in the studio being paid to make it. And I'm not even exaggerating when I say that. All of the music in this game is a solo guitar with, like, drums in the background and a little bit of bass. There is no music. It, <laughs> I don't count it as music. I mean, it sounds okay. It, it sounds fine. You get used to it after a while. But 
You are hearing the same notes being played over and over again, because I'm not even joking when I say it's one leitmotif per song that they make into background music for the game. And it all sounds just absolutely ridiculous. This coupled with all of the robot sound effects and the mute then the the gunshot sound effects from your blaster just lead to a surplus of noise. I will say that this was not the worst game I've ever played. I have played worse games before, but good grief, this game is an absolute train wreck and I had a blast going through it just because it was everything I'd hoped it would be. It is so terrible at doing everything that it unintentionally manages to be a so bad that it's good kind of scenario. And I'm playing this on like the worst way that you could play it on the Xbox One S. I seriously think that if I were playing it on a better piece of hardware that I would have been able to complete the final boss and I would have been able to enjoy the full experience without the frame drops. But even without frame drops, the writing is terrible, the story doesn't exist, and the game itself is just a mediocre train wreck. So here's the burning question, what can we take away from this video? Nerf Legends is the best game of all time. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Everybody watching this video, if you buy Nerf Legends, you will have the best time ever. It truly brings justice to the Nerf logo and honestly offers an accurate description of what Nerf is like nowadays. It is a huge advertisement for current generation blasters like the Ultra series and the Elite 2.0 series by trying to glorify these blasters and make them look better than they actually are. I mean, they make every blaster look better than they actually are. The game itself is terrible at being a game. It's not very fun when you actually like look at it as a game and try to play it as a game. The only reason that I got so much enjoyment out of it is because I love how bad it is. I love stupid crap. And this game is like the stupidest crap I've ever seen. The everything in this game just made me laugh and it was a blast playing through it. Please do not get Nerf Legends. Please play any of the Roblox Nerf games instead or just say screw it and try and make your own Nerf game. I don't know. Thanks for watching. I'll see y'all next time.